Now, these items are missed constantly because people just don't know enough about what they're looking at. You've got to know more than those you are buying from to do well. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some items that most people miss for many different reasons, but the biggest one is they just don't know what they have. I see people walk by tons of value all of the time. They just don't know enough to be effective in some categories. Here's a perfect example some items that I purchased in this thing right here. This is what they came in. I bought these after, gosh, I don't know how many people walked by them did not see a value at all in these. And there's like 40 or so items in here. Now, why would somebody walk by these sorts of items here? Now, these are state pins. Each one has the name of a state on it. They're brass, they're early, probably date to the turn of the century. Just by looking at them, just by looking at the construction, they don't look like much. There's nothing attached to them. There's, there's no way to date them if you don't have a clue on the construction. They just look like metal pins to most people. Now, this is one of those areas where a little bit of information will go a very long way. Now, when I see these with state names or like Industrial Day, Chicago Day, or wording like that and stuff, it usually leads to an exposition, World's Fair, for an example. And that's exactly what these are from. Buried in the collection, had anybody actually dug through them and risked getting stabbed by the needle, unfortunately, but, and this one here says it all. This is telling you where all of these come from. Without a doubt, I am sure they are from the same place. All together, all constructed the same, similar markings, all put together the same way. So excellent item here across the board for a very minuscule amount of money. On average, things like this can sell for 35 or 40 bucks a piece, and I got like 40 of these for 10 or 15 bucks. It's an item that everybody else walked by. They didn't want to dig through them. They didn't see a value. There was no ribbons. Who knows what everybody else thought? So we're going to go look at some items like this, some items that you may not recognize the emblem, the design. It may mean nothing to you, but the value is there in what we're going to show you. Now, this is as well from the Pan American Exposition, from the exact same event as the items that I have. And you can see the pin is very similar in construction style, design, and the whole works. The back's a little cheaper on this one. Those were for delegates, the ones that I have. They're delegate ones. They're made much sturdier because they were made to be worn for quite some time. Any of these sorts are worth some pretty decent money. Now, this is something you can run into without that hanger, without the meet me at. This is to say, meet me at Pan American Exposition. This one basically went for 35 bucks. Now, they're not all low, cheap items like this. Items from some expositions and fairs can sell for thousands of dollars, including little tiny pins. Now, here's another example. This same buffalo, this exact same styled buffalo image, can be found on hundreds, if not thousands, of different items. And again, it's tied to the Pan American Expo, the World's Fair. Elaborating on that same design, this is just a flipped, a reversed image of that same buffalo, bison, whatever you wish to call it. And this is as well a Pan American Exposition button back. Early, not in best condition, it has some problems, it's semi-damaged even. It still went for 50 bucks. So you have to know the emblems because most of the time on some of these, you won't see the wording Expo, World's Fair, or anything else like that. You have to kind of delve a little more into it to realize what was used to advertise many of these items out there. The Buffalo, the Bison was the artistic piece that was used on pretty much everything. Here's another one. This is for new departure coaster brakes. Uh, roller coaster brakes, I would assume. And there's the exact same buffalo bison on it, just like you see here. This is typical. It's on almost everything. There's currency, tickets, uh, uniform pieces, all sorts of different things you can find that same exact animal image on. Some of the other ones you may run into may have just letters. P-P-I-E. That is on postcards, poster stamps, envelopes, brochures, flyers, cards of all different types. It will just say PPIE. And the PPIE stands for Panama Pacific International Exposition. It's another fair. 
This one's highly valuable because of the stone in the center. It's an original, authentic amethyst that was made, cut out in 1915-ish. So excellent item here. If you don't do a little due diligence and research your items a little better, you could miss out on something that's worth hundreds of dollars. Now, most fairs of any type expositions will have uniform pieces, pieces worn by employees that worked at that place. Now, this is off a Colombian guard, and that would have been one of the security officers from the 1893 World's Fair. The Eagle was a well-renowned figure from that, as well as Christopher Columbus also. Many items have these emblems, these logos on it. I've personally had other pieces from the uniforms of this exact same guard who would have had this on their uniform. The buttons have a globe on it. So you will also see items with globes on it. No wording. It doesn't say anything on it whatsoever. You have to kind of know a little bit about it. Now on this one here, what's a giveaway is the circle, the wreath around the eagle's head. That is typical of what you would find on a two-piece tongue and wreath buckle, a military uniform buckle. And this typically would have had a chain and a whistle would have been on there so they could call for backup. Now, another thing to consider with World's Fair exposition items is there will be advertising items all over the place. Companies would set up there and have a booth in an industrial building or anything along that line. So they would have had specific promotional advertisements that would have been handed out or could have been purchased. Now this is for a fishing lure company. It's a Skinner and it says a thousand islands on it. There was a booth there. I'm sure this was handed out there. Now for a lot of these items too, there are tons of books and reference material that can help you identify them. Anytime I see an advertising piece that was turned into a pin like this, again, it's got a typical pin back on it. I automatically assume it's an advertising piece from a fair or festival until I find out otherwise. So many items or giveaways at places like this. You'd wear it around, you'd take it home, you'd remember the name, and you'd hopefully buy the product. Now going back again to the figures, the characters that were used to advertise. The 1904 Louisiana Purchase Exposition used the patriotic female figure here. She is on all sorts of different things. Buttons, commemorative items of every type imaginable. Stamps, uh, stickers, labels, cards, folders, brochures. I, the, the list goes on. Jewelry items, bracelets, chains, charms, you name it. For all of the places we're showing you, they made all of that type of stuff, plus more. Now, other things I look for are uh, items that may say exposition building, industrial building, um, textile building, and that's it. Those terminology, those wording, just like the states marked on pieces like uh, the, the pins I showed you in the beginning, are perfect signs that that could be tied to something just like a fair or festival exposition. It also helps to know specific attractions that were at these places. This is from the Chinese village, again going back to the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair. Now you will just see that exact dragon on things. You might see it in metal. You might see it printed on a button pin like this here. You might see a shirt button, uh, envelopes. It might just say Chinese village with the dragon and no reference to the St. Louis World's Fair. So you've got to look beyond what you see there and look at the possibilities that it could be part of something else. Village and things like that. There were villages and setups that were made to look like uh, a specific part of the world. So a Chinese village would have looked like a little section of China at the World's Fair. You can find pins of all sorts for most of the World's Fair of all various types. Large chunk of them, as I was just saying, might just say a building name. This is the electrical building from the 1939 New York World's Fair. It's a ladies pin. It's fancy. It's well done. It doesn't show up very often. This is something that will be missed. There's a set of these for pretty much all of the main buildings from this World's Fair also. So there's dozens of different pins that you could find from this. Now this is as well from the New York World's Fair. This is the Trilon and Paris Sphere. This pin can be found in dozens of different variations, all sorts of different things, including the rhinestones like we saw before. Most of the ones I run into do not always say New York World's Fair on it at all. You would have to know the emblems. I run into salt and pepper shakers of these buildings also. So if you, again, you don't know what you're looking at, you won't realize what you have. Now here's another example with the same emblems down there being held by Betty Boop. 
anytime I run into this Betty Boop pin, I automatically know it's from the New York World's Fair from 1939. A lot of times the little dangling charm she's holding may not be present or there may be a different one. And here you can see the back of it just so you know what to look for. This will show up. The Betty Boop pin on her own, knowing that it's from 1939, always goes for 50 plus bucks. Animals, mascots as well are something else you should look for. A lot of these little Scotty dogs may be references to the 1934, 33, 34 Chicago World's Fair. There were mascots, and this is just another fine example of something you may run into. It's a cute pin. You might not see, again, the word Chicago. It might not say a date. It might just have the spiraling image there. You've got to be careful. You've got to pay attention. You've got to realize a lot of items aren't going to tell you what they are. You will have to figure out on your own through research or just common knowledge or experience what the image is, or even if it is an image to begin with. You've got to know more than the people you are buying from to do well. Here's another example, Fort Dearborn. Now, there was a real military fort called Fort Dearborn, but this is obviously too new to be that. There was a Fort Dearborn at the 1934 Chicago World's Fair. So it was a recreation. They had badges like this for the folks that worked there. This is a real one. This is a heavyweight one. This is very well constructed. It's very thick, pressed up brass. It's not a modern day reproduction. You have to know that. But these do look like newer ones that you can run into as fakes or repros. So just be careful. But this does appear to be the authentic real deal on this one. Now, here's another excellent example. This is one of the more common ones that I run into. I probably have a few dozen of these here in-house right now myself. This is the Heinz Pickle given away from the Heinz Building at the 1939-1940 World's Fair as well. Some of the concession stands, you could have bought pickles, and these would have been giveaways also. Now, if you don't put in the tie-in that it's from the New York World's Fair, you will get less money out of it. If you don't list it in that section, you will probably get less money out of it. A lot of people just go, oh, it's a Heinz Advertising Pickle, and they just list it up like that. But the founding place, the original release of these was for the 3940 World's Fair. you got to pay attention. You've got to use the right words when you're titling something. you got to put it in the right section for some items. Not every item, but these items, people are specifically hunting for World's Fair stuff. So you've got to be careful. You don't want to miss those key factors. Now, just one more example. This is the logo, the logo from the Montreal Expo from 1967. And the hostesses, the, the folks who serviced and worked at a lot of the, the buildings in the actual exposition had these pins on their uniforms. It's basically kind of like a lapel pin. But if you don't know that emblem, you're going to walk right by this. These pins right here are something you'd probably see in a quarter bin or less because no one's going to know who isn't into this sort of thing what that logo, what that emblem is. So the bottom line is here, pay attention when you're out there sourcing. Pay attention to what you're looking at. Think about it from different viewpoints. Don't just say, hey, it's a buffalo, it's just some animal pin and blow it off is worth nothing. A lot of things have tie-ins. A lot of things use specific emblem and imagery. You've got to know some of that to do far better. Why do I make so much money on some of the items that I sell? Because I know what they are. I know how to identify them. I know the emblems. I know the markings. I've researched most of the stuff. I've invested a ton of my time to be able to know more than the folks that I'm dealing with. That's how you can get a leg up doing this type of business. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Her cousin, beautiful Chrissy. 
You can make Velvet's hair short or make it grow. Hair that grows, hair that goes to here to there. It grows. Beautiful Chrissy and new Velvet. They're ideal.